Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. What's up? What's up? Kid Capri. Back again. I knew he was going to say it like that. (laughs) You have to. I mean, it's only right. You know how many places I went around the street? People, I I got so tired of people doing it to me. (laughs) What do we do? It's my name. Yes, I was saying. You started it. But you know when they come up to me and they be like, yo, do, do the thing. Mm-hmm. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ. Like it's, it's it's the same thing. It becomes your signature. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it is what it is. So, how are you feeling, man? I mean, I know a, a couple of months ago you had COVID. You said you lost forty pounds. Yeah, man. Talk about that a little bit. Cause that was right around the time that rest in peace, K. Slay had COVID as me well. Me and K. Slay got sick at the same time, and he went in the hospital, and I didn't. Um, and I was talking to K. I was talking back and forth, and I remember him telling me, "He said, yo, kid, I almost checked out last night." And then, um. I stopped talking to him, and I started talking to his moms. And me and her were going back and forth. I was checking on to make sure he was all right. And then I, I said, let me just lay off of him for a while. I know she's probably going through it with him. Let me just lay off. And then next thing you know, I found out that he was he passed. And then when I spoke to her, she said, I, I can't even go in the room and look at him. Wow. She couldn't. She, uh, his uh, vote manager or somebody was over him praying. But she couldn't even go in the room and see him. It was just sad. It was sad, man. You know? Did you have all your shots, or did you did you go through the shots and the boosters and all that? Nope, I sure didn't. So, how do you feel about that now? Would Would you have got your shots now? Was it one of those things? And why didn't you get your shots? If, if you don't mind, I asking. didn't. I didn't understand. I didn't. I didn't, I wanted to see where it was going, man. I, you know, I, I I didn't. I still don't know. You know, um, I will say. Since the boosters and so, since the shots came, everything did go down as far as the COVID is concerned. But mm-hmm. I just didn't, I wasn't fully convinced yet. I didn't really understand. This is the second time I caught it, too. Wow. Yeah, the first time I caught it, was it was way worse. I caught that at the beginning of the, of the COVID. And um, it was bad. I understood why people died from it. Fred, the godson, he was sitting mm-hmm. in my crib. A month later, he was dead. Wow. Right. You know what I'm saying? This dude was dancing around my house and happy. Um, but I just felt like um, it just wasn't something I was prepared to do at the time. And, you know, Clue, as a matter of fact, he when I when I got sick the second time, he sent me CMOS, he sent me mm-hmm. different things, and people from around the country sent me stuff. So I was taking care of it, and I was good, you know. I just didn't see myself taking them shots yet. I just, I don't know. And it's, as a matter of fact, certain dates that I was supposed to do, certain shows I was supposed to do, I had to cancel because I didn't have the shots. Because you didn't have the card. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I'm, I feel good. I feel healthy. I feel strong. Thank God you look good. healthy. Damn. Yeah, man, I don't have no issues. Everything is beautiful, man. God's now, I, w- I was saying that because, you know, the, the other day you were supposed to come up here and my wife got COVID mm-hmm. and my daughter got COVID, the, mm-hmm. the baby. And, you know, they didn't really have, I mean, the only reason she even knew, we were on our way to go out. Like, I was in the car, she was dressed, makeup, we were about to go out on date night and then she sprayed perfume and was like, babe, I need you to test me. And I'm like, why? She was like, I can't smell the perfume. Wow. Tested her, she had COVID. I tested all my kids, nothing. Tested myself, nothing. Tested the nanny, nothing. Tested the baby, who was six months old, had COVID. Wow. Um, Called the doctor immediately, and she was like, you know, the reason why it probably didn't affect the baby and mom is because when she was pregnant, she, she got, got that, yeah. She got the uh, shot. Uh... And she got, the, she got both shots and the booster. So in four or five days, it was out their system, and they didn't feel anything. My baby, she was a little moody, but... Nothing too crazy, thing. So God. it's not as strong as it was now as it was then when it was killing people. It's just that it's still in the midst. It's, it's still around. Either that or just, you know, because she got the shot, it didn't affect the system the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, all I know is I, I just had it myself. Like, um, how long ago was that? A couple months ago? Maybe like two, two and a half months ago. Yeah, like two ago. months ago, yeah. yeah. You caught it too? Mm-hmm. Mm. But it just felt like a cold. I only had it. I was probably, I felt a little under the weather, and I don't get sick that often, so I was like, this doesn't feel right. So I did an at-home test. It was positive, and then I did another one, and that was positive too, and I just was a little under the weather for maybe like three days. Man, to see some, to see all the entertainers and all the different people that I knew that passed from this man. Mm-hmm. It was it, it it was a treacherous time. You know the last the last pandemic was in two thousand um, in nineteen eighteen. That was the last time they had they did the we went through the same thing two years of masks and everything went around. But imagine what they went through then without having the the medicines right. and the technology that they have now. Back then they had to they had to suffer that out. So it was it was definitely something that turned the world around. It made the, it kind of cheapened the world a little bit. For a minute, you know, and um, and you didn't know what to expect. That must have been scary for your family too. Absolutely, and when I got sick, you know, uh, everybody reached out. 
from around the world, man. I want to shout everybody that did that. But it was a scary moment because, you know, you don't you don't know. You right. don't know it did it. All of a sudden it just pops up on you and how do you deal with it? Like with Biz, with Bismarck, man. Like to see him gone right now, for him to not be here, that's just wild to me, man. I was looking at him in the casket, man. I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? And this is a dude, it's some people that you just, you know, everybody's gonna go in one day, but it's some people that you just see them here forever, like a Michael Jackson. You see right. him for here forever. You know what I'm saying? But Unfortunately, it's not that way. And you and Bismarck, you have such a rich history together. Bismarck, he gave me my first album deal when I didn't even want an album deal. I wasn't even trying to be a rapper. I got hot with the mixtapes in the street. Cold chilling. Yeah, it was cold chilling. I sell mm-hmm. a little rhymes on the, on the mixtapes. You know, they got popping in the street. And he gave me my album deal. He could have gave the album deal to anybody that was a good, worthless rapper at the time. But he gave it to me. Sat in the studios, did did beats, wrote the rhymes in the studio, and we put it out. And um, you know, records never been in my bread and butter, so that's why I didn't do one every year. My next record wasn't until seven years later, which was soundtrack in the streets, and now I got my new one out. Twenty something years later after that, so you think if you would have uh, been consistent about putting out your own records back then, it could have been your bread and butter. Yeah, it, I mean it could have been, but you know what? I didn't want to deal with clemencies. I didn't want to deal with attitudes. I didn't want to deal with egos. I didn't want to deal with all that stuff. I'm a I'm a easy dude. I like things mm-hmm. that just go easy. Everybody be happy, and we just have fun to do what we do. This is supposed to be fun. This ain't supposed to be a thing we are supposed to stress out of it. So when I did the soundtrack the streets album, dealing with the clemencies, dealing with the the schedule, people mm-hmm. come to the studio drunk, and, you know, just different things. That was, <laughs> it was like, you know, I don't know if I want to do this, and I'll just make records <laughs> here and there when I'm asked. But then when I did, um, when I started helping the battle rappers, <clears throat> uh, a lot of the battle rap, you know, all the battle rap thing, you know, a lot of artists wasn't helping them because they was figuring that the battle rappers couldn't make good records, mm-hmm. which was a stigma on them. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, well, let me go and uh, try to take that stigma away. So I went and got the battle rappers that did a, a, the album called Top Tier, which was the album before this one. I just never put it out. But they gave me the attitude of, yeah, I can do this because they was humble, came in there, did everything I asked them to do, was on time, you know, and it was just a breath of fresh air for me mm-hmm. at that time to do it. So I, that's what caught me, got back in the mood. So when I did the Love album, that put me in a real big focus. And it all started from the Top Tier album. Before we talk about the Love album, uh, when it comes to DJs, you're probably one of the most known DJs when it comes to hip-hop, probably one of the biggest and best DJs. What do you think of the DJ culture now? Um, I'm going to tell you this, Sammy. You know, when I was getting on, at that time, man, unless you were somebody that was behind a group like Jam Master J behind Run DMC or Jazzy Jeff behind Fresh Prince or Red Alert on the radio at the time, DJs wasn't getting the recognition, the money, and the respect that they were supposed to get. And that was part of my whole fight was to have a to, to, to have a stance on, treat me like an artist. I have to be good enough to demand that type of respect. But when I show you who I am, treat me as such. So when I would get on stage with this platinum artist that had this big record that sold millions of records, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna be better than that dude on that stage because I had to be, because the 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 imagery of the DJ was we just play records. We just come a dime a dozen. Girls will look at us like, oh, he's just a DJ. You know, and I didn't want to be looked at like that. I wanted to be looked at as an artist. So my whole thing always been to make the, the DJ be an artist. Why aren't we on the front page of award shows, uh, award mag- uh, magazines, or being invited to award shows, or being re- held to regard as somebody that, like a Stevie Wonder that plays keyboard. I'm playing the turntables. Why can't that be an instrument as well as a keyboard? You know what I'm saying? So that was my mindset. So to see the DJ elevate to where it's at right now, that was always in my plan from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Where the downside is, is that when you got signed to a record label, if you got into a club, the DJ, or you got hired, you got booked, you were special. Now it's to the point where anybody could grab a computer, throw a bunch of MP3s on it, throw a fly out, and they're out. Mm-hmm. Right. They didn't do no artist development, they ain't you no know, struggle, they ain't been here, they ain't cried, they ain't had no doors shut in their face. Everything was set up for them to just do what they gotta do. Which is cool and I'm not mad at that, but understand where it comes from. Understand, that's why all the older people always been my heroes. I would never talk down, and I'm not saying anybody talk down on me, I'm just saying I would never talk, as a general statement, I would never talk down on the people that came before me, the mm-hmm. older people, or the people that might not got the money, the accolades, or the things I might have later on. They always looked at to me as, as heroes because they didn't get those things. And um, so that's why it's, it's, always, it's, always, it's always right to understand where it come from, understand where you at, and if you're gonna be in this, then understand that it's not just about you. It's never about me. 
Whenever I go do a show, whenever I'm in a venue, it's always about the people that paid that money to come see me. How can I make them feel better than they did before they got there? That's my whole focus. So that's what we need to worry about. Now who's the best DJ? Who's the best at this? Who could outshine shine on this? If I look out for this person, is he going to outshine me because I looked out? And that's not what's important. What's important is we help each other and keep the movement going. Because you got things like TikTok. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff like that is dictating what's supposed to go on. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's why we got to stay strong in it. Why do you think that a lot of the older DJs uh, sometimes feel a way? Like, um, and what I mean like that is it's like, I feel like some of the older DJs a lot of times don't want to help the younger generation. I'll tell you this. Soldier Boy made a, a statement saying that the OGs don't want to help the youngers. That's not true. If you listen to my radio show, I play young music, the old music, everything together. We, we can't even put me in it. I'm a different thing. But I watched uh, so I, I watched Grandmaster Flash the other day mm -hmm. on, the, on the IG. And he said that... Uh, DJs was out saying that the new DJs are the in the new influencers or the new something that he said. And he also said that that's disrespectful, which it is. Mm -hmm. Um if you haven't done if you haven't done with a Kid Capri done mm -hmm. or a Flash done or you know anybody that been around and did everything, you can't make statements like that. You can't you can't be the man in your city, and because you're the man in your city, that's the end all be all. If I take you out of that city and put you in Wyoming, what you gonna be able to do? If I take you out of that city and put you in Mexico, what you gonna do? If I take you out of that city and put you in Alba, uh, put you in Anchorage, Alaska, what you gonna do? You gonna be able to satisfy those people the way you do at your hometown? But what happens is we get caught up in this thing where we embody who we are. I said this uh, line on one of the so new songs I did. I hate a little rapper that's a rapper all day. I'm David Love when I wake up. I'm not Kid Capri when I wake up. Mm -hmm. I'm Kid Capri when I need to be. Mm -hmm. I turn it on when I have to. But sometimes we embody this thing that when we make it to a certain level, we're that and that's it. That's the end of all. It's nothing be beyond that. It's nothing before that. We are it and that's it. And it goes further than that. It goes way further than that. And, and that's what we have to respect. We have to respect each other's position. So I try to stay um, as balanced as I can, try to stay as humble and grounded as I can, and, just, and still learning and still trying to be creative and try to make people just understand that it's, not, it's, it's always bigger than what I'm trying to do. It's always about them. So that's where I'm at with it. Now, know? as far as DJs coming up, who do you look like? Who do you say? Okay, this this DJ has took it to the next level. D Nice has took it to the next level with what's going on with Absolutely, the net. Absolutely, positively, mm -hmm. definitely nice. took it to the next level with with that. Uh, and keep in mind, and I tell everybody that was lightning in the bottle. Meaning, that was lightning. You don't follow it. Like that was perfect time. Perfect, <laughs> perfect time. Place. He done it. He does it as generic as it was. It wasn't like I did it for a check, he did it out of his heart. And that's what resonated with the people. When mm -hmm. you do things from your heart, that's why I had a hard time with DJs, or supposedly DJs that was up there begging for cash apps when the turn of the pandemic happened. Five days later, they were mad you were at you about bad. that. A lot of people were mad at you about that. I didn't care who was mad, let and me, I still don't care who's mad. Let me explain. Mad. So if you don't know, Kick Capri, a lot of DJs during the pandemic, when they DJ, they put their cash app on the bottom. Mm -mm, that's not and, what happened. And, okay, I'm sorry. Well, okay, let me, let me tell you what happened. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. What, happened, what happened was, I personally think people should send you money if you up there DJing and wasting electricity and sweating and trying to entertain the people. Yeah, they supposed to. Damn right send you money. And if you want to put your little pin up there because you don't want to keep answering the people but I want to send you money, you damn right. But when you turn to the camera in the middle of people's misery... Five days after it started, and the first thing you saying out your mouth is, yo, who could send me $50 in my cash app in the next 10 minutes? Yo, two minutes, send me uh, send me $20. Yo, I need, I need, yo, I need y'all to send me money. You know, now you making the business that took care of myself and you mm -hmm. look trashy. Mm -hmm. You make it look like we a bunch of beggars. There was no cooks up there doing that, no, no uh, actors up there doing that. There was no behind-the-scenes sports people, no sports people. There was nobody up there doing that. But the DJ. And strippers. Well, I mean. <laughs> He's messing with the DJ. Yeah, but the DJ <laughs> right. 
was the one, <laughs> and it was D people that wasn't really DJs. Mm -hmm. They were probably somebody that had a controller, you know, they do what they do, but they in the name of the DJ, they just made it look terrible. And I got promoters all around the country watching this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Promoters see that say, yo, these dudes back, and I ain't paying them what they want. Ooh, he's making the business look crazy. And that's how I came from it. So it wasn't a thing about I didn't want people to make money. Of course I want you to make money, especially in the situation that was going on. But there's a classy way right, of doing it. things. You know, and my way of my thing was, you know, I'm a D y'all see me up here on the live doing my thing. Come see me tomorrow. If y'all like it, have me come do y'all wedding. Have me come do y'all event. That's a that's a business way of doing it, and a classy way of doing it, where you don't look like you're taking advantage of people's misery. So that's what my problem was, and I stood on it. And I remember Mr. C called me, and he said to me, he was like, yo, kid, what you said was 100% right, but what even more that I love about it is that you stood on what you said. It didn't matter if somebody felt the way about it or not because they didn't totally understand where I was coming from. And that's where the ever we live in, in this internet era, is that you got to be real particular and real sure about what you say when you say it because if you meant something, right. they don't take it what you meant. It gets misinterpreted, for sure. You and Scratch got into it a little bit because of that. Did y'all ever squash that out and say, like, because y'all got back and forth for that. And I hated it because y'all both my guys. And... I look up to both of you guys. But y'all will both stand on what you and believe. DJ world. And not... nah, but, but what you don't understand yeah. is like Scratch and Kid are, are the two DJs that you grew up watching. Well, I did. My generation, I could say. Because a lot of kids say they grew up watching me. But I watched Scratch <laughs> I watched Scratch do the tricks. And I, you know, I used the same mask and try to do the same tricks as him. And Kid Capri, like a lot of his style, I got from Kid. Yes, I'm the same way. Don't put me on the side stage. Put me in the middle. Mm-hmm. Don't put, don't don't make me a side. Uh, no, put me right in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 the star tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I seem the way that you speak, the way that you talk, the way that you use your mouth. Pause when it comes to the crowd. Mm -hmm. I you? got that from Kid. No, it's the truth. Why you did look, you have to pause that, Envy? Because I said the way you use his mouth. Right, to the crowd. I know, but <laughs> Thank just, you. I'm a New York. <laughs> just, <laughs> just who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so to see you guys not necessarily see eye to eye on things. Why was that? This is bef if, I'm gonna say this. The verses was the was the. Uh, was the the icing on the cake, man? We already had some issues, and and, and let me just say this: Scratch is somebody I spoke to every other day. This is like my brother. So for things that happened the way it did, I was more hurt than mad. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't see that coming. You know, I didn't see that coming. So I, I'm not going to get into all everything that happened, but as far as the verses was concerned, you know, um, when I went to verses, I came there, hugged them. Because at first, be, I wasn't really rocking with him. But did it start from the Cash App thing? Did, that's where it started from? He felt you should have No, it started before that. Oh, okay. All it right. started before that, but that was one of the things that made that, that was starting to weaken our relationship when he when he interjected in that. And instead of being on my side and understanding where I was coming from, he went and put a message under there saying, before you get at me, SNS and D-Nice for taking Cash Apps, which are narcissistic ways and all the stuff he said. I wasn't even talking about him, D-Nice or SNS, you know. It just elevated into something else. So by the time the verses came, you know, before that whole, before the verses came, I wasn't rocking with them at all. And then when the verses came, when I was asked to do it, um, I felt like, you know, it was bigger than me. It ain't about me. Let me just go and do the event. It's about these guys. I want to see them get their flowers. So let's just make it happen. So when I got to the venue, first thing I did was seen Scratch and I hugged him. I was like, yo, we don't rock right now, but, you know, I love you. And we'll see you eye to eye later on at some point. And I walked away, and that was it. That was that was the end of it. No more a loss, and it was about the event. Let's do that. And the whole time, he had a whole setup where he was trying to shit on me in front of the whole world. Like he took that opportunity to do that, which wasn't a smart thing, first of all, because I'm not the dude you do that to. Take my talent and you move it to the side. I don't have a record of being bad to people or treating people foul or doing bad business or any of that. So I said this on the drink chance. Right there, you lose just because of that alone. Let's take my talent and move it over there. Now you got to deal with the talent. You know what I'm saying? And I done been up against a lot of great people. You know what I'm saying? And Scratch is one of the great people. He's, a, he's mm -hmm. you know, he is who he is. Mm -hmm. But nothing intimidates me. Nothing's going to make me fold. Nothing's going to make me feel like this person's going to be better even if they are. I'm always going to have that attitude that I'm the greatest on stage no matter what. So for him to do what he did in that setting, it was like a smack in the face because it wasn't about me and him. Mm -hmm. It was about KRS and Kane. It was about making sure they was all right. Now, how they came to me and said, yo, kid, 
there's a battle situation you want to get, I would have said, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what was told to me. What was told to me, kid, I need you to do assignment. Come out there, tear that shit down when you first come out, and then do the KRS thing. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, it was an awkward moment. That's why I started rhyming. I, I did a little whack scratch because it was an awkward moment. I didn't know what to do. I, it was like dead air. But at, at, in that moment, I was pissed off. I was really, really hot because I'm thinking like, dog, why would he even do some shit like that? Like, why? where did this come from? And then, you know, KRS gets at him, Kane gets at him. So it was just all wrong. It was wrong. But, but mainly, it was about Kane and Chris. And and that's what I wanted to do. Like I said on the Dream Champs, I got sucker free clothing line. I could have wore a sucker free shirt, sucker free hat. I could have wore it today. But in every situation, it's not about me. It wasn't about me in that situation. It was about Kane and Chris. It wasn't about me. Be it's Kid Capri. I'm here. Look at me. I did what you asked me to do. And that was my job. But keep in mind, I've been asked to do verses four different times before that. And, you know, normally somebody would have took that opportunity because it's there. I don't take opportunities because it's there. I take it because it's the right thing to do at the right moment. Like the KRS and the Kane thing was. Have y'all spoke after? Who? You and um, Scratch? <laughs> no. 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 And here's the thing. After it was all over and everything happened, right? Because we had a meeting in Kane's room and, it, you know, but after it was all over, if, if Scratch would have called me and been like, yo, kid, you know what? That was foul what I did, but even if you don't rock me like that, that was just foul what I did. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have did that, and I apologize. I'd have said, you know what, Scratch? I love you, but don't worry about it. Let's go fix this shit up. And that would have been that. We'd have fixed it up. We'd have been on our way. Instead, he goes on the net, and he lies against me. He says that, he said, the first thing he said was the rhyme I said was about Kane. That's not the truth. What are you talking about, kid? If I didn't tell Kane I wasn't gonna do it with him, you wouldn't even been on the show. Mm -hmm. Kane's my man. Mm -hmm. My mom's just to cook for Kane. No, it was about you. Then he said, Kid Capri don't want DJs to shine. That's why he brings DJs on the road with him. Well, ain't that making DJs shine if I'm bringing DJs on the road, paying them all this money, they seeing the world, they having a good time, they ain't gotta worry about nothing. Ain't that making DJ shine? Like, what are you saying? Like, he tried to say everything to get him out of that situation. And I understand that. But then I don't because I'm somebody that you talk to all the time. We talk to, you call me your kid. You know what kind of dude I am. I'm not a dude of you to call me and be like your kid. Nah, I mean, it hung. Nah, let's work it out. And and that's what I'm saying. So when you when when something like that happens, it's like, damn man, where's it gonna come from next? Who's next to shit on you? Who's the next one to like mm -hmm. mad at what you're doing? So now they're gonna come at you this way and. And it makes you shut down against everybody. And I'm not na I'm not naturally like that. I'm an easygoing dude. I love I want everybody to win. I want everybody to do good. I want everybody to be happy. And that's my life. That's that's why God has blessed me the way he has blessed me. Because I have greatness in my heart for everybody. Now that you said they approached you about a bunch of verses. Who did they want you to do verses with? One of them was Keith Sweat. <laughs> What you mean? You gonna sing against Keith Sweat? You the light skin Keith Sweat? What do you mean? No, yeah, he want. They wanted me to back him up. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 I was like, <laughs> right? They wanted I was me like, to battle. I was like, what? No, the nah, like, they wanted me to back him up. But my thing was, he, he's the mighty Keith Sweat. Come on, he is who he is, and he's Harlem on top of that. But I meant DJ battle. I thought no, it was not. No, there, there's never been a DJ, and that's another thing. That's another thing too. In the history of verses, there's never been a DJ battle. Correct. Mm -hmm. So for well, Scratch to do a, what he did, it didn't Spanish make one. sense. Yeah, they just had a Spanish one uh, this weekend. This weekend, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this weekend, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but up until this weekend, right. there has never been no. that. So that's why it didn't make no sense. Me and Scratch don't do what each other do. I don't have sparks and or I don't do that. So that didn't make sense. It just didn't make it, He came there to kill me. That's what he came there to do. So, but it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's past. But the verses, um, yeah, the one thing about verses, when you come there, Make sure that you there to work and really get it in. Don't come there playing around, man. Right. Cause that's that's your all of your legacy in one spot at one time gotcha. and the whole world watching it. So you can't come in there playing. Shout to Ray J. Shout to Jeremiah. Yes. See what happened. But you know, I don't think they have took it as, as serious as they might have thought they until should. afterward. And until they after were like, they damn, see I the impact. Yeah. 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 What's your relationship with Flex? I love Flex. I mean, Flex <laughs> act the way he act with me, but I love him. Like you know. I'll tell you the truth, man. I would love for me and Flex to be super cool. Me and Flex could have made be a great versus. Me and Flex could have made so much money. When me and, when I gave when me and Flex had a little situation going on, 
Which call, time? Which time, kid? The last Seems time. Like y'all always had a play. <laughs> the last, the, the big one. Mm-hmm. I call Flex. I say, yo, Flex, you know how much money we could have made? We could make to take, because at the time I was doing Give a Kid Foundation for the kids. I was going around the country, taking care of all the kids around the country. So I said to Flex, we could have made so much money to take care of a bunch of people that need it. Flex, mo- Flex thing was more of, I don't want to shine off of me then let's take care of other people. Because mm-hmm. I said to him, it's, it's not about the DJing. It's about the opportunity that we could create for other people. Right. Mm-hmm. But he felt like I gave him pressure. He felt like it wasn't the right time at the time. You know, whatever the case may be. But here's my thing, man. I don't want no beef, no issues, no nothing with nobody. I just want to do good in what I do. I just want to have fun, make my bread, create opportunities for other people, and keep doing what I've been doing. I'm not into if I'm better than this dude or this dude's better than me or... You feel secure in your I'm spot. I'm a grown-ass man. You're secure in your spot. I'm you good. I did it all. I ain't got nothing to prove. Be good. I think that would be great for Versus, though. If, we could, if they could figure out a he way to do it. He will never do it. Because it's, it's not about who's better who's not, right? It's not. It's, it's, it never it's, is. It's, it's the culture, right? It's the culture. It's the same thing as, you know, uh, mixtapes back in the day. But, Envy, mm-hmm. that's when, when I told Flex, let's have a little battle. Let's battle. It was about the culture. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, I didn't get on there and say anything about his family, mm-hmm. his girl, his radio station, his friends. I said, battle. Let's battle for the culture. And that was it. That man got on there and said, I fell off. He said all these different things. So, I mean, I guess in battle, that's a part of it, but that's not where my head was at. My head was, you know. Skills. It was just skills. Let's just mm-hmm. do it and just have fun. It wasn't even about the skills. It was because, mm-hmm. to, to tell you the truth, Angela, anything could have went wrong that day. Bad equipment for me. Nobody want to hear excuses. They want ex- the results. So mm-hmm. I could have had a bad day with equipment, sp- uh, sound man messed up, whatever mm-hmm. that happened, and Flex would have won. It's not about that. It's about what we could have did and the opportunities we could create to open doors for other people. Right. That's what my head is always about. You know what I'm saying? It's always bigger than me. It's always about how can we make things better. Now let's talk about this album, Love. First album in 24 years. Yep. Well, you must have been bored at home during pandemic. <laughs> no, what it was... I've been on the road from 88 to the pandemic. You know, of course, time old, but most that's been my bread and butter. 88 to the pandemic, I've just been going and going and going. So I never had a chance to sit down and focus on anything else. Even when I did Soundtrack the Streets album, I kind of had help because I had track masters with me. But I never had a chance to sit down and just focus on other things. So in the pandemic, I did four albums. Well, I did the fifth album. I did It's five albums. I did five albums. I did... The real, we opened the real estate. We opened up the so, sucker free clothing mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. Um, I started um, started another business. So that's what I'm saying. I had a chance to sit down and just focus on stuff. So when I did this album, one of the reasons why I did this album was I seen Little Pump disrespect Eminem. Mm-hmm. You no, know, nobody listened to you old. Nobody listened to you. I'm like, yo, what's up with these old niggas calling people old? And like, does that mean they're not capable? So on one of my records, the business on the album, I say that. I say, um, um, Y'all better stop acting like the OGs ain't capable. Get your ass crushed on that stage. I say that on the record, right? So when I seen the pump uh, say what he said, that kind of contributed to me. You know, I, I said, you know, let me do that. Then, then I started seeing some of the older statesmen in the music business scared to put their music out because they're scared about what the young DJs is gonna do. And um, I just said, you know what? Let me just let me just write Slap King. I wrote Slap King, my first joint. I just mm-hmm. wrote it, and when I seen that, I was like, wow. Did the record, came out good, and then I did the album. So when I put Slap Key out, my thing was, if people don't accept this record, if I get any kind of negative off this record, the album's never going to see the light of day, even though I knew what I had, even though I knew what I had. And with this album, I could have asked any of my producer friends or any artists that I know come get on this album. I did. I produced and wrote everything. I just did everything. And I wanted to show the world that I'm not just DJ Kid Capri, I'm everything, but DJ Kid Capri is what I got big as. I got a Grammy on my wall with Jay-Z. I got different accolades of records I produce, but I got big as Kid Capri the DJ, so they never looked at me in another way. I don't get a lot of credit for writing or producing, so 
this was part of the reason for me to do it. So I put my mother on the front cover. I put my daughter in the arena in the uh, Uptown record, <laughs> and I made it about the love. I made it about the love of the, the the career and the music, and and everything that should be going on. How you should listen to music. How a body of work should be made. It should never just be just one thing because that one thing is hot. Make it everything. So it's layers to it, mm -hmm. you know. And um, what other DJ is a rapper? Like this, most I mean, most DJs put out albums. It's like a compilation situation. Who yeah, else? well, the first album like that of his kind was my album, Soundtrack of the Streets. Right. That was the but very I'm saying, first one. But who else one. has, what other DJs? But then you have DJ Quick, who was a DJ. Oh, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Quick. You have okay. um, Run was a DJ. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Uh, Diamond D, DJ producer. Yes, yeah, DJ Diamond. You know, um, Q-Tip was a DJ mm -hmm. and producer. You know what I'm saying? So you have people that... Biz was a Biz, DJ. Biz, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, but... For me to sound the way I sound right now after all the time my last album and at, at my age right now, it's pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? The beats, everything, the way I write, the way I perform it. I haven't got one complaint since I put this album out. Now, one person said, yo, kid, you shouldn't have did this or this record's whack or that record's weak. I haven't got one complaint. The only frustrating part for me is I know that everybody doesn't know it's there. Because I'm independent, I don't have no big machine behind me. I'm doing it myself. I try to make it as good as possible so that it'll have life on its own, whether DJs on the radio play it or they don't, or if we get the, the big backing behind it. I wanted to make an album that people will really like say, yo, this is really good. And that's all I've been getting. That's 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 what the feedback been. So, you know, um, I shot three of the videos. I did uh, Slap Key, I did Uptown, I did Wide Awake, those are out now. I'm doing more videos to it. And another thing, a lot of people put their, their projects out and after a month for their project being out, they off, offer to the next thing. Like, their project ain't worth them putting the time to it. I'm never scared to go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to work. I have no problem with working, and I'm going to continue to promote my album as long as I need to. I own it as mine. You know, and, I, and this, is a, this is a message to a lot of people out there. 60,000 records come out a day on Spotify. Your music could get lost in everything. So it's up, it's up to you to make sure that people know it's there. Not every radio station is going to take care of it. You ain't going. Not everybody's going to have two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars to promote one record on the radio and across the board. So you have to make it as good as possible, and then be able to take that cool thing about you, push to the side, and work it, and make people know it's there, and keep pushing it, and keep letting people know it, and be cool with the DJs, and be cool with people that can help you, and in return, re return them favors back to those people. Don't get on like a lot of artists do. When DJs help them, and once they get where they're going, they don't even call to check to see if you're healthy. Mm -hmm. They don't even see if you're all right, if you need anything. Not that I do, but a call. Mm -hmm. Yo, kid, you good? You all right? You call me every day when you needed something. So that's what kind of made me kind of shy back from people, too. Like, I done helped so many people, and those same people I helped, I can't even get a phone call to say, yo, kid, you good? But who checks up on you when, when, when you down and out? Who calls you? Like, for myself, I know, I know Fat Joe's going to call. I know... Fab's gonna call. I know Nori's gonna call. I know uh, Buster's gonna call. Oh my gosh, I love Buster. Um, trying to think who else calls all the time. Those are the brothers that will call me all the time, besides Clue and you, that make sure I'm good. So mm -hmm. who call, who reaches out to 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 kid? Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, Henry. Not a lot of entertainers. When I got sick, a lot of entertainers reached out. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of actors, a lot of different people. When my mom's died, people like Terry Crews and People like that reached out, but mm -hmm. and, and and you know what? I don't know if I have a type of a type of imagery that people think I'm all right, mm -hmm. like nothing's never wrong, or like I got everything under control. I'm as human as anybody else. I got feelings like anybody else. You know, I want to be checked on too. Give me a call, your kid, you good? Because mm -hmm. this is how I move. I remember one time Buster said to me, "Your kid, you never asked for nothing." He called me. He's like, "Yo, you never asked for nothing." I said, ask for nothing, because I always call check on him, see if he's healthy, whatever. You never asked for nothing. I said, why do I need to ask for something? Because I know you got I got my own. Like, I call to check on you generally because I care about how you're doing. If you're healthy, if you eat and everything is all right, you're moving around, you know, you don't think about these things sometimes and nobody going to say nothing. I said, I get it. you used to people having their hand out all the time. So when somebody don't and they're looking out for you, you know, you ain't used to that. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I, I can't understand. stand when people call and they don't tell you right away what it is that they want, but they try to act like they make a small talk, but you know... 
this person is calling me for a reason. Let's yeah. just get to it. Yeah, but it's 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 dope when somebody calls <laughs> and say, yo, you all right? You it's good? unusual. Is Absolutely. everything straight? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and 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 that's what I'm talking about. That's somebody that really care about what you're doing and care about your well being and how and you know, you can have your life in their hands and and you're straight. But now, you know, unfortunately, we live in a business. We're in a business where we love the business. We love what we get out of it. But it's not for everybody, but everybody wants to be a part of it. And some of those people that are part of it, their heart is not in the place where my heart might be. And, and I used to get confused with that. I used to say, yo, why nobody think the way I think? Why nobody see this the way I see it? And take it personal. Mm -hmm. But you can't. You can't. Yeah. Everybody's their own individual. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this. Of all the artists that you've worked with and helped, what are, what are you most proud of? Like, what collab would you say... This is the one that I'm like, this was a defining moment. I'm really proud. When Madonna called me, when I did Madonna. Madonna, I mean, Jay-Z, everybody I worked with, I'm very honored. But when Madonna called me, that was weird. That was, that was. It's different. <laughs> it's all the way with that side because that wasn't even somebody I had a relationship with. Right. And um, she called and asked me to produce Masterpiece for her. I did that. And then she asked me to do the record. She wanted me to redo the record with her and Nicki Minaj that she had out. But she already paid LMFAO to remix it. But she still gave me the same amount of money that she gave me for Masterpiece to put to remix this record just to hear how it would come out. And she never got the record. Never asked for the money back. Never came and got the record. Nothing. I still have the record. So I said this on Drink Champs. Nobody better ever talk bad about Madonna. She's <laughs> all right with me, top of the list. She and she got that bag in a big way. So what, let's let's play a record off the album. What you want to hear now? Uh, you can play her tight. Her tight. Her tight. And we appreciate you for joining us, the legend, the OG Kid Capri. And shout Love out to Vina boy. Love for us, your daughter. Vina doing on? the thing. Just give us an update on Vina also. So. She's working on her music. She's in the studio all the time, man. And, you know, I don't have no dealings with how she do her music. I ain't into nothing. <laughs> that she, I let her rock and do her thing. But she really, really works hard. She really works hard. And she, uh, every time I talk to her, I, matter of fact, she's in the studio more than I see her. You know, and... um. It's, it's, it's that business. You got to be consistent. got to stay hard. You got to really work. And when she started showing me that she could sing, it was more than just the singing. She had to show me. I knew that she would be able to handle the business, how it goes. You know, you know how it is out here. But more than that, she could treat people good and, you know, really perform and really work hard and show me a lot. So she's, she's doing her thing, man. And then one last thing I wanted to ask you. DJ Premier was up here the other day, and mm -hmm. we were talking about hip-hop turning 50 next year. Mm -hmm. So do you have any big plans? Oh. Or anything that you're planning to do, because that is a big deal. Yeah, I got to think of that. I, I can't let that go that day go without me doing something. I'm going to figure it out. I've been so busy with everything, man. It's be hard to keep up with a lot of stuff, but you're right. I got to definitely start you planning on that. You have so much history and so many artists. Mm -hmm. I got to start planning on that. And um, this big Rock the Bells thing is coming up, too, that uh, L just asked me to be a part of. Um, to tell you, I just want to see the show. <laughs> I just, I just, it's going to be crazy out there, but I want to be a part of it too, so it's going to be dope. But I'm doing my own festival. And my own, my first, you know, I've been on the road forever, but I never had my own Kick It Pre tour. Mm -hmm. So now I'm putting that together. Wow. And I'm putting an uh, annual um, festival together. We're working on that right now. And it's going to be big. It's gonna, I'm going to try to make it as, as big as possible and make it, as, um, make it a lot of fun. The festival's you know? in New York or...? Yeah, we, well, we're going to try to take it around to different places. Okay. I got to do, uh, matter of fact, I got a big uh, thing, the sound stage at Katona Park coming up August 14th. I'm doing that, me, Vina Love, and the hoodies. It's going to be real big. So everybody's out there in uh, New York, come to Katona Park that day. Katona Park is a legendary park where, you know, uh, hip-hop started. See the park with Herc, but Katona Park is just as important as that park. So make sure y'all come through and have a good time with us, man. It's going to be really dope. All right. Well, it's Kid Capri. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm. We'll